What does anticipation boil down to as biological correlates or mechanism? What it means, it means that any response to an external event is governed by parameters that are amenable to adjustment. Extended anticipation is where some of the parameters that govern the response to events can be adjusted out of context. For instance, in advance, by reference to some change other than the immediate context of the event. We can see that whilst this might be useful in some ways, it could also be very confusing and even dangerous if it were to get out of hand. To explain the latency ratchet, let's set up a situation where a group of creatures, possibly hominids, are involved um, in a cue choreography. What's happened to my cue choreography? They're involved in a cue choreography. That is, they are participating in a sequence of moves based on cues. Based on cues. They are participating in a sequence of moves based on cues detected from the environment, from the disposition of other members of the group, and from combinations of both. So, for instance, the group might be looking for a resource such as water or food. Now, let's, into the situation, uh, let's add some boulders. Um, something like boulders, for example. There they are. And imagine that the... Um, they hide behind them and uh, so we're supposing that these creatures are, are in a situation where hiding um, is advantageous so for instance there might be some quarry that they're after um, some quarry that they're after and it might be advantageous to hide behind things to creep up on it. Um, <clears throat> right, so that's the situation. Now latency latency in a context like this refers to the momentum of perception um, when signals might be interrupted. So, for instance, imagine that each time you blinked, um, your mind, when you opened your eyes again, had to reinterpret your entire situation from scratch. If this were to happen every time you blinked or closed your eyes or looked away, um, you know, a bit like waking up again, going through that period of sort of emerging and working out where you are, um, every time you, you, you wouldn't be able to get anything done. Um, that there, You'd have trouble following any particular line of action. And um, so latency refers to um, sort of persistence of interpretation when signals are interrupted. Um, 
so how long how does how long does um how long does latency last um now in a situation like um here we're saying the latency lasts quite a long time because they're hidden behind boulders which means that the ones completely hidden have lost they can't see the quarry anymore and so from the point of direct perception if there was no latency in their perception interpretation of their situation they might forget what they were doing altogether these creatures forget what they were trying to do and not be aware of the quarry anymore and go off and do something else and then this whole thing w would fall apart so but on the other hand if the latency was too great they might you know a creature might crouch behind a boulder um, and then um, never get up again um, because the latency had become infinite so that won't so it that, so it will fade so the, 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 there's an advantage to having latency but there's also advantage for the latency to fade away at a certain point to release the creature from that particular situation and go off and do something else um so uh, but so right so that's we've we've got this situation they're following a Q choreography which I said before which is where they're all following cues in a kind of coordinated set of behaviors that lead to an outcome or that may lead to an outcome um, so we're setting up the situation now supposing this creature is in a situation where it can peep over the top of the boulder and see the quarry whereas these ones are in a situation where they have to hide behind their boulders so they can't see the quarry but they can see their companion that's what they can see and this is the situation for the two <coughs> sets of anticipation to kind of be coupled together so this 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 creature's anticipation it's approximate anticipation in this because he's a direct um, perception of the quarry and the general situation um, these creatures who can see this one they're they're also engaged in proximate anticipation because they're looking directly for cues from this one from this one's disposition they're gaining cues and clues you might say from that um, but it's a situation where the group as a whole it's kind of coupling the anticipation together um, and um, to create for the group as a whole an extended type of anticipation um, and thereby uh, an ampli am amplification or an extension of the deployments the effective deployments that as a group they can engage in um, so for instance these ones by interpreting the cues resulting from the disposition of this one which is going to respond to um, the movements of the quarry they can do they can have different responses to that um, they can for instance they might choose to wait longer they might choose to maybe move around their boulders in response to that one seeing that that 
is rotating and that's moving along, rotate, they might move around. Um, or they might spring out into the open. Um, various things that they can do as a result of being aware of general cues from the environment and cues from, the, from that one. Of course, it's worth stressing um, that um, the individual creatures themselves would not and, and don't need to have a conscious sense of anticipation about where this might be leading for this setup to work. They just need to follow the proximate cues that evolution has thrown up in situations like this for them. Using abstract terminology, we can say that with a scenario like this, it creates an extension of cue space. Cue space, which is cue space. Oh. Q space, which is the set of useful cues that create useful op the set of cues that create useful opportunities. Now latency <coughs> ensures that the portion of biological mechanisms devoted to these coupled anticipations remain active for useful periods of time and when they're able to remain active for useful periods of time, then as evolution um, sort of progresses, we could say, um, with successive iterations of situations like this, um, those portions um, of biological mechanism um, can expand and, and develop um, and l maybe latch on to other useful applications. So when we say ratchet, the ratchet element refers to the idea that once the mechanisms are in place um, in this coupled sense and in the minds of individual uh, creatures, um, then they can go forward. They provide a basis for further extensions um, in maybe the duration of the latency and the repertoire of responses. And, um, and, of, and again, it's worth stressing, it doesn't, this, it's, it's the group as a whole that has an extension of anticipation in this scenario. It doesn't depend on the creature in either role know it, knowing what will result from following the cues. So these ones don't necessarily consciously know what will result from following the cues based on this creature. And conversely, neither does this one has to consciously know that its res proximate response to the quarry and thereby transmitting cues to these ones, what the effect will that be? They don't need to know, but the, um, the effect, the general effect is kind of like if you were watching, would be as if they did know. Um, so that is, in brief, um, that is the latency ratchet. And the beauty of the latency ratchet is that each individual is operating on the basis of kind of approximate anticipation, but the combination, the effects of latency enable this to develop into a form of extended anticipation. And have we said that once the machinery um, is in position, um, it's then available to be moulded into extended and possibly other purposes.